be fight. But look, it, it seems in that case that uh, Don he got his hand to it, so 45 is the correct call. The narrowest of margins between these two great rivals. Whoever got the last touch to it, it's a 45. And we're into the two minutes of stoppage time and about another minute 20 to be played. Colm O'Neill has got a goal at six. He can put it over and put two between them. They call it a dangerous lead, but Kerry will have it all to do. They don't do anything there because it goes straight to Kieran Donaghy. And now there must be a quick counter-attack by the champions. Ma just about reached Darren O'Sullivan, a risky crossfield pass. Mark O'Shea, well, what a loose accord. Darren O'Sullivan's off again, this time grounded by Colombo Driscoll, and that could be regarded as intentional as well, but the referee has... Uh, decided yes it's a black card for Colm O'Driscoll it was intentional correctly gets the black card and there's two men down below us knocking lumps out of each other Paul Ganey and Michael, Michael Shields, Shields yeah. they've decided to stop the boxing O'Driscoll's got to go and spend the last few seconds over on the bench having been only on for about uh, I suppose two minutes second black card issued to a core player the first was Paul Kerrigan well, you remember in the semi-final replay in Limerick last year, in the last couple of minutes when Kerry got involved with Mayo, you know, ran the clock down. Cork are doing exactly the same at the moment with Kerry today. Two yellow cards, Paul Ganey and Michael Shields. We've just about played the two minutes of stoppage time. But surely the referee will add enough time for Kerry to have another chance of trying to get an equaliser. One behind. They've got to carry the ball downfield. We're now beyond the two minutes, but it's usual for the referee to allow play to continue until an attack breaks down. Donica Waltz, Cork defending. They get it out to Fionn Fitzgerald. Will he be the hero? Will he save their bacon? He's done it! The level! What a Fionn Fitzgerald! Incredible, Jared. On my clock, it was 37 minutes left, 20 seconds gone. Oh, they're a lot of time, but as you said, he gave that few seconds extra. Just Fitzgerald had the belief to go and take that on. That's courage, that's bottles, that balls from Fitzgerald. And the referee is just telling the goalkeeper, Ken O'Halloran, to kick it out. He's going to blow the whistle. It's all over. They finish level. History repeats itself. This referee, Bobby Hughes, was here as well back in 2010. Then it finished level, and it's done the same today. And the managers, Eamon Fitzmaurice and Brian Cuthbert, shake hands. So much to talk about. I mean, goals that were gifted in the first half, penalties that were dodgy in the second, and a lot of really good play. Kerry put to the pin of their collar to try and mount to try and stay with this cork challenge brand cuthbert will be very very proud of his charges but it wasn't good enough they didn't win the title they'll have to do it all again and the full-time score here in fitzgerald stadium killarney it's Kerry 215 cork 312 some match Mark. oh absolutely fantastic i think it's a shame in some ways to see body hughes getting an escort off the pitch but you know I, honestly the second half it was a privilege to be at this cork to be fair lived up to their name as the rebels the way they took the game to carry they looked in a very difficult situation at half time but they had the belief they have restored confidence in themselves they confirmed many things that we already know you know they have so much skill on the side but today that skill was matched by effort by intensity by quality team play and they just give an exhibition of football at the second half but Kerry's cuteness Kerry's economy of effort I think stood out in the end and that last point it typified the type of scores they got all day from distance with minimum effort and of course now it will dawn on everybody that a replay can't be in Porky Cueve because that's out of commission so where the replay will take place is going to be interesting but it's finished level here Dara it was a thriller Let's uh, go, first of all, before we go back to studio, to Debbie Amara, he's standing by with Barry O'Driscoll, I believe. So close to being the oh, agonising in the end from a Cork perspective. Agonising, yeah, but a good performance in the second half, and we'll take a lot from it, positives and negatives, going to the next day. Overall, on the balance of the 70 minutes, do you think it was a fair outcome that the, the sides were that close? Um, yeah, I, you know, one or two refereeing calls mightn't disagree with, but that's what happens. Coming into the game, so much was written, so much was said about this Cork side. Surely you must have got motivation to prove an awful lot of people wrong. Yeah, I did, but I don't read the stuff, so it really doesn't bother me. But uh, 
yeah, you hear all of it, and like, yeah, it does annoy you, and we're fed up of it, so. Well, I suppose that the challenge now from a squad perspective is to make sure that this isn't a flash in the pan, that you build on this and no, no. you put, put Kerry to the sword we're in the replay. Looking, we're looking to perform like this and better every time we go out, so we'll move on to the next then. We wish you well in the replay. Thank, Thank you for your time. Back to you in Crow Park, Dara. OK, guys, thanks very much indeed. A sensational game of football. It really, really was a stunning match. And I cannot tell you how delighted I am to see Cork off their knees. You know, it was a brilliant second half performance. I mean, Alan O'Connor's heroism, but the thing that they showed today was courage conspicuous courage and hard running and harder running and they suffered the affront of the penalty I mean we potty in fairness he wouldn't know a penalty if it bit him in the arse I mean it ah, was no, no 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 it no, was, it was Listen, never a penalty he, well, we can look and at in that, spite of it he looked at it yeah. in an instant he made a decision well he was wrong okay, he was 100% wrong that, in that's every your way opinion. and no one thought it was a he penalty he made his decision James O'Donoghue no, reached a hand in and fell over it was never a penalty uh, yeah but, but apart, the point is this the point is this but the point is you were very strong against Cork before this match yes and you didn't have that kind of a display in their locker well you didn't well I'll tell you what you think about Cork all the time they've got the players to perform Mentally, they're weak today. I mean, that was very special in the second half. And they'll, they'll feel that in the changing room now. They'll feel that chemistry and they'll feel what it's like to play with that sort of respect. And Cork people ought to be very proud of the team tonight. But, and this is, and I okay. don't think it's their fault that they didn't finish that off. Terrible, terrible penalty decision. But nonetheless, they'll go away from this feeling wronged, but they'll feel in here that they've shown their courage and they can show it again. Because that's the key. This is not a great carry team. I think I, I think the game was made by Cork. Really, at halftime, I yeah. said that Cork needed to score goals to win the game. They got the goals, but as Joe said, what they showed was a great fighting spirit. Yeah. They didn't lie down, and even after getting the hammer blow of the penalty, yeah. they came back again. They came back and they came back, and it was some of the younger players like the O'Driscolls and Mark Collins, yeah, and of superb. course the old warhorse Alan O'Connor. Yeah. And Colm O'Neill came into it in the second half. But it was just a marvellous game of football. Yeah. A credit to both sets of players. Did you think they had that in them? No, I didn't think it. I questioned them all the time. I, I said that Cork had fallen flat on the big day, that they threw in the towel. Well, they certainly didn't do that today. Yeah. And great yeah. credit to them. I, I, I and I think it's a wonderful tribute to those players that we have questioned. They showed now that they're up to it. Let's see them go on and finish Let's the job. Let's look at the two goals. These are the yeah. two Cork goals. You said, Colm, I think they need... In the end, uh, to be honest, Damien, uh, you know, I think Colm O'Neill, who was unerring all day, if he had kicked that 45, we'd have probably, you know, we'd have probably come up short because we'd have needed a goal with where the time was at. Um, but to be fair, we kept plugging away and Fionn kicked a, a great point. Um, I suppose from a neutral's perspective, it was a fantastic game, but uh, there's certainly plenty that we can be working on for, for Saturday week. Look, we're, I'm delighted with the way that we performed, certainly the second half there, we gave this everything we had. I suppose when it comes down to fine margins, we're disappointed. But I haven't seen any of the, the video uh, footage yet of the decisions, but uh, look, that's the way cookie crumbles. I think we were lucky enough to get a penalty. We needed something to happen at that stage, and uh, in fairness to James, he showed uh, you know, great maturity and great battle to, to slot it, and we really needed it. So uh, I think word is that it was a soft penalty, so if that's the case, we were lucky. Yeah, we'll chat about the penalty in a moment and confirmation. The replay is on Saturday week in Killarney because, of course, Porky Cueve is being redeveloped. But the first thing we have to say, Kevin McStay, what a game. Brilliant. Absolutely the game of the season in terms of the football championship. And everything, just about everything you'd want in a football match. The setting was magnificent. Huge crowd. Great start. Five goals. Um, very steady scoring rate. Nice bit of controversy thrown in as well. And then a magnificent finish. And uh, I'd agree with both managers. I think uh, Kerry were a little lucky to get the, the draw, but probably in the end slightly deserved it because Cork, I think, just stood back that small little bit just with a second to go or two seconds that could have finished it off and it didn't happen. But I think a draw will give both sides a great chance to further develop for the summer ahead. OK, well, let's, let's go through it then chronologically, Kieran. And Cork's... Pace and intensity was obvious from the start. Well, Des, they had to make a statement of intent, really. They took a lot of criticism from a lot of people, himself included, and they had to meet the game at the right intensity levels. I thought Cooper, you know, he got the defensive structure right. They changed things around. It wasn't Mark Collins. They put Kerrigan back. They were cognizant of the long ball into Donaghy, but they got men, men back in defensive decision. They, positions. They got physically stuck in to Kerry. They made life difficult for them. They cut off the long ball. Here's one, Stephen Cronin, one-on-one. -on -one. 
gets out, wins it at pace. Uh, great first 10, 12 minutes. Here's the goal. Donegal Connor, the ball down the line, and he follows it with a pass. You know, he's the one that gets back in to support Collins. Now, Collins nearly carries it over the line here, but he, he, he shows great vision, awareness, patience, sees the pass, ball across to O'Connor. Watch this from a turn from Colin O'Neill. Throws it one way, then goes the other, loses Mark O'Shea and into the back of the net. So it was a super start from Cork. It was a start that they needed. They had to hit the ground running. They had to put it up to Kerry because they'd come under a lot of criticism. They didn't really surprise us. We kind of expected that, expected them to come out of the block and what was just a fantastic game. Yeah. And yet they had that brilliant start and suddenly the bubble got burst in a horrible kind of way, Kevin. It did, yeah, and they'd be kind of annoyed with themselves over it because, as Kieran rightly says, that it set up nicely, nice and steady, first quarter nearly over. And they're doing all, all the things right. Even James Lockery is really doing well. You can see inside, nice man-for-man -man marking, everything tight. Won't give James Anu his left foot, gives him the inside line. And lovely cut across here by Cronin, who sees the danger, goes into the space and collects the ball and then does... I suppose does the one thing a 19-year-old does in his first Munster final. The one man who didn't want it was Michael Shields. He should have probably flicked it back to Paul Kerrigan. That's because his, back is, his, back, yeah. his back is to the goal. Yeah. And uh, now, Michael Shields, I think, himself will know he should have done a little bit better than that if he'd used his left-hand yeah. pass. His right hand was hooked by Johnny Buckley and the ball spilled. And look at the cam finish once again from Kieran Donny. He seems to be in the right spot all the time when there's a breakdown, a catastrophic yeah, he breakdown. He gets the yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, he, but he's calm, Des. Yeah. You have to be very calm when those chances come up and he just slips it into the net. Right. And then Kerry kind of took control. They took control, Des, and I wouldn't necessarily agree with Kevin that they deserved a draw. I think they were very, very lucky. They played for 10 minutes of 70 minutes, in my opinion. They got mm. two goals at crucial stage, forced them. Like, Barry John Keane got in the team through form. Uh, and he showed it in this period. It was the 10th minute, the 27th minute to the 37th minute, where they kicked five unanswered points. They had an overlap down this left-hand side all day. Uh, Killian Young here pops the ball to Keane and, uh, and on the turn. And this was the period of dominance. This was the period where they took over at yeah. midfield, only for 10 minutes. Uh, coming up here, great bit of mid midfield play here between Sheen, Machine, Sheen and Moran. They switch men here. Look, the keeper is looking for the, the kick out. He's looking for the cork runner. The, move, the movement is made by Kevin O'Driscoll. It's picked up by Sheen, and he, he, he follows a Driscoll. They, they switch men here. Great bit of communication. Hand over their men, yeah? Yeah, mm. hand over. The ball comes out here. Sheen's in a much better position. This is straight off the kick out from the Barry John Keane point. He gets it into O'Donoghue. And O'Donoghue was lively in that first half. He had a lot of space on Lockery. He turns over the bar. It was the purple patch for Kerry. Yeah. It gave them the platform going into half time. And at that stage, really at half time, Cork's mental ability was being questioned. Yeah. Did, did they have the yeah. psychological power to come out and get back into the game? And in fairness, they proved that. They came, they came out and they kept fighting despite being a um, five-point yeah. deficit. They, they yeah. really did, didn't they? Because they've been questioned by so many people, including their own supporters. And, and at halftime, weren't we all saying the exact... Like, yeah. Let's be honest, we all were saying they're four down again, a bad third quarter, it's all over now. The game is busted in and, and, and they're out the gate. But to their eternal credit, they really got stuck into it. And uh, being four down at half time, they turned it around really quickly. This is the goal that got them going. This is a class bit of skill. I mean, taking it on the, on the bounce and lifting it over like that. Here's O'Connor again, slicer. This is premeditated. There's Alan O'Connor. He would be the guy jumping. He's the biggest. Mm -hmm. And this is just brilliant from Colum O'Neill. Here's Marco Shea putting every ounce into the block, but he just can't get it and it's over the bar. And in this little period that we're looking at, they tagged on 1-4, yeah. which now answered all the questions we had, in all fairness, and it put them three points to the good. Cork had now three points to the good, and they're really playing the ball around, uh, around nicely. I think Alan, Alan O'Connor was massive in that massive, period of the game absolutely. as well. He really, he really came into it in the middle of the park. Like, look at the pace there uh, of, of young Madriska. He flew through the heart of the Curry defence. Come on, we're, we're ready for this. And they came out of it in great shape, three points up again. And it looks like they're in control, and then came the game changer. The game changer, the penal. Um, never a penal, Des. Um, bad call by Paul Gius, who had a very good game, in fairness. We reckon he got all the calls right. But except this one. Except this one. A bad call. Uh, and it was, it was a significant game changer. You know, the ball is in. Collins' eye is on the ball. His hands are up in the air. He's going for the ball. He's entitled to do that. I don't know who makes a meal of it. He throws the hands in the air. Now, Paul Gius, takes three seconds to blow the whistle. So he, he, he looks at it, he makes it, whether he, he, he was convict, or whether he was convinced it was a penalty, I'm not so sure. He's entitled to do that, 
but maybe the roar of the crowd, he blew the whistle, he gave the penalty, he went in to talk to the umpires, and we're not exactly sure why he done that, whether it was a black card or not. He might have been questioning a black but, card, but I think. Yeah. It, was a, it was a bad, bad decision at a crucial stage in the game where Cork were in full yeah. control. Well, I think he had an excellent game. I want to put that on the record. The referee, yeah, yeah. He, he, was, he was excellent. But I'm going to make two points about the penalty, very quick ones. Uh, to make that call, he has to be 100% sure. He, I, I don't believe he could have been, and I'll tell you why. Kieran and I have looked at it a lot, a lot of times. We had a good debate over it. I'm not sure. Yeah. We're, we're, we're pretty sure it was not a penalty, but we're not 100% sure. And the other point that says he didn't need to make that call. I, I don't believe he needed to. There wasn't uh, the pressure on him to make that call. The, the, the Collins' eyes are on the ball. His two well, hands are going so for the ball. Ah, you're, you're, you're not yeah. fully convinced, yeah. but I, I, I think, I, as I said to you, would that be given as a free outside the penalty area? No, not no, in, it wouldn't. Not in no. a million I, I, years. No, Kieran, I, I, have, know, I have to agree with you. We looked at a lot. On balance, it's not a penalty. Yeah, OK. The game now is absolutely in the melting pot and it was an extraordinary finish. Oh, an, so an, many an, things an to it. An incredible finish because uh, you're wondering who, who has the heart for it now. It's 2-12 apiece. Who, who can win it? Who wants it the most? We think Cork do.